You're watching Pegarai TV, Rhode Island's public access channel. Welcome to the Single Ladies Cafe. This is Miss SC. And as you can see today, we have an extra guest at the table today. His name is Sali. Welcome, Sali, hey. to the Single Ladies Cafe. Thank you for having me. I'm so pleased to be here. Thank you for coming. We appreciate it. Yes, Sali is going to um, be under the uh, Exposure with the Fox corner, and he's going to update us on an event that he has coming up. You guys are going to absolutely love this event, and if you do not show up, come on now. I don't want to hear nobody talking about and they ain't got nothing to do, to do because I will my, I might delete you that day. Man. Wow. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's so anyway, serious. that's yeah. real serious. So y'all need to be at that Strict. event. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, hi, Fox. Hi, Miss Sissy. How you doing? I'm very good. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you. And you're looking lovely today. Thank you. And you like rice. <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> yeah, gone with, with the, the wind. wind. Fabulous. <laughs> Hi, Hi, Miss Hello, Miss Essie. How are you doing I'm today? I'm doing well. Good. You look good. Thank you, girl. Very strong. Nobody said I look good, but that's you look okay. Good. Oh, no, no, you no. Know, no. Good it. too late. Yeah, we was we was just trying to. You know, we didn't know if you had a lady or not. You know, this is the single ladies cafe, and you know, we do some crazy stuff. And want to respect the boundaries. I am in. The hornet's nest. Yes, I am. Okay. But I'll, I'll right, take then. it. Well, you still look good. <laughs> <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about um, the difference between um, in love with someone or just loving someone, um, and is there a difference? Mm -hmm. You know, Miss SC is just hardcore, so so I don't know. I'm going to be finding out like the rest of y'all. Um, I think I have some people that might think that they know the difference so we'll be um, posing some questions we actually um, contacted um, our love expert celebrity love expert um, Hassani Pettifer before we came in to kind of get his take on it so we'll be sharing that information with you all too so I think what we're gonna do is kind of start out with you know what is love I think we need to define what love is or uh, you know because I think that people get that mixed up and I do think that a lot of times um, we'll kind of blend in love in love so we have to kind of mm -hmm. be careful um, that we understand the difference if there is a difference mm -hmm. so let's start with um, the word love and I'm gonna let Miss Kiki define it for us okay love is the attachment that results from deeply appreciating another's goodness. Okay. And that is not the Webster's Dictionary. I was gonna say, is that Webster? No. You know uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> Love is a choice. Okay. It is active. You can create it. Just focus on the good in, uh, in another person. If you can do this easily, you'll love easily. Okay. All right. Mm. Yeah? Going in. You know, we get um, going in. You know, I, I, I I run a group called Facing Love, um, and and in that in the evolution of that group, we've, the, of course, the definition of love has come up quite a few times. Um, it's probably love itself is probably the most pontificated upon mm -hmm. subject since mm -hmm. the beginning of of human er interaction, and industries have been built on that concept. Mm -hmm. um, uh, literature. Uh, songs, wars have Absolutely. been fought um, because of, of this feeling that we have that you so eloquently uh, described. Um, I think the main thing and what I heard you say, Kiki, is active. Mm -hmm. And love equals action. Love is a, a verb mm -hmm. and not a noun or not an adjective so much, but it's in what you do, not in so mm -hmm. much what you profess. Yes. 
so nicely done. I know. Wow. <laughs> I'm bringing you just here because I saw you. Awesome. Oh, I like that. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. So I agree uh, oh, with, yes. you know, everything that I've heard so far in terms of what love is. And I think the word that um, stuck with me was the one before active. I think it was... Um, the it's a choice. The choice. Like, I think you have to choose love. I don't think that is just something that happens. And I hear a lot of people say, it just happened. But I think you have to actually mm. choose mm -hmm. to want to love somebody. It don't just, you know, come out of nowhere. So um, we'll get more into that. And I'll yeah. tell you a little bit more where I'm going and where I'm coming from with that. What else did you have, Kiki? OK. <coughs> Excuse me actions affect our feelings most this is how we deepen our love for someone um also it has to do with a lot of, with giving okay. you know and it's different um components actually with that the first is caring okay. demonstrating active concerns for the person's life and growth exactly the second is responsibility responding to his or her expressed and unexpressed needs and mo in adults their emotional needs Third, respect the ability to see a person as he or she is, to be aware of his or her unique individuality and consequently wanting that person to grow and unfold as he or she is. And with these three component, components, all depends on the knowledge on how deep you know this person. Okay. Very nicely <clears throat> said. So we got an idea of what love is um we understand it that it is a choice that you have to make we understand that we don't want to hear a lot of yada 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 mm -hmm. we want to see it yes. okay you know in the giving part is you know in my opinion when you give it has to be kind of vice versa yes. i know a lot of people will say well um you know it's not about you receiving but it's about you giving and i agree if you worry about giving me and I worry about giving you, this should work, mm -hmm. okay? Because now it's balanced. When it's unbalanced, we're, we're, it becomes a problem. Because there can always be one person in the, um, in the relationship that gives more. And I don't mm -hmm. mind a little bit more, but when it's like outright, mm -hmm. what have you done for me lately? <laughs> No, you know, right. mm -mm, that becomes a problem, yes. and especially for women, you know, because we love when we're getting all that attention or our men are buying us stuff and treating us right. So the action part and the giving part and the caring part is extremely, and I want to almost put in to your definition that um, love is an emotion that we express, um, and that's how we express one to one another, that I like you or that mm -hmm. I care for you or, um, you know, I want to be with you. You, you. A lot of times, I, I think I heard at the table today, um, we don't need a lot of words to know that someone loves us or someone cares for us. So we're not about, oh. you know, talking all, just telling me what I want to hear. I want to exactly. see, yeah, you know. Yeah, actions speak louder mm -hmm. than words. Absolutely. Yes, they do. And when I, I, I kind of, my antennas went up when you said express and unexpressed. Um, as the only uh, male at the table right now, <laughs> fellas, I got y'all. Don't. <laughs> um, the, um, the the one of the things that we struggle with a lot of times is the unexpressed part from y'all. We're not mind readers, right? And so a lot of times that women are uh, so, uh, like you said, they come from an emotional standpoint mm -hmm. so much more than we do. Mm -hmm. We're more of a of a rational. Well, a rational it, it can be. It's, it's good, it usually has a positive connotation as when someone is over emotional, that's negative, but I don't yes. think emotional in itself is a, is a bad thing. But when, when reality mm -hmm. is dictated by one's own emotion, that's when fellas, we start having a tough uh, time in, yeah. in our relationship with y'all. Mm -hmm. So um, the unexpressed part, is something that we, we really struggle with. It's like, baby, you gotta help me out. What are you saying? You know, I need communication, which is difficult in itself, again, mm -hmm. because, fellas, we are not the most communicative exactly. of, of beings, and we need to really work on that. So, um, yeah, the, the, the unexpressed part, we need to, we need to kind of um, be, be worked through that, you know? Yes. Help, help us out on yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. because I think we're not mind readers, mm -hmm. 
either. Right. And I think if you guys don't say that I don't understand or, or that, because we can't, I think we catch on a lot quicker. Not that that means that we're smarter or anything like that. It just, in the relationship, I think we catch on to things because we're so emotional versus men, they are. They're very, they think about things, they think it out, they, you know, we plan out stuff, but sometimes we miss because we don't really think it out. And so what happens is, you know, there's this miscommunication between the two. We are emotional, they're not. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to understand that as well. And sometimes what I do is I'll say, do you understand? <laughs> I say that do you understand? <laughs> I'll, I'll say that because yeah. I want to make sure that. How do you say it, though? Well, I, I do. Say, uh, I do. No, it's she not. She definitely don't say it like that. It'll be okay. more like, "Do you understand?" No, 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 no. That's no. not with my boo. That's not with my boo. I don't do that. But I will ask him, "Do you understand?" Because I want to not only be heard, but I want to be understood. understood. So, but, but guys tend to go into a shell when things are bothering them. So that's why we don't know what's going exactly. on. Exactly. You know I mean? They men, stand men, off men, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, men get to the point where they, they want to handle it on their own. You know what I mean? When they... Uh, big time. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, you know, you're right. That's, we're, that's a taught behavior. Um, we're, we're in a society that we're, we're, we're taught not to... Uh, we're taught how to be... To be to be a man is yes. to be be steely and not anything to affect you and especially not to um, to to be overtly expressive of your of your emotions, which I think is a mistake a lot for mm -hmm. us. There are times where you can um, you should be uh, expressive of your emotions because it's a it's a stress reliever, and that's yeah. something we were talking about in my group yesterday. Is um is the things that that um that affect men uh and it's it, it seems to be an exponential thing they we hold on to our emotions and don't express them to y'all and then that binds us into this to this stress ball and then sooner or later we release and then we're taught also is uh, in this um in a society to be physically expressive as yeah. opposed to words and that's where the whole domestic violence thing comes exactly. in. exactly yeah. and i think i think so that you know we like that manly part of you guys we, we want y'all to keep that but we do want you to like show that you care some so, some point you know that you know if i'm standing there and i'm pouring my heart out to you and i'm you know and you got your back turned to me ain't even listening <laughs> come on now that ain't that's right that ain't that's right considerate. totally, <laughs> totally. <laughs> oh. <laughs> i said most i said most that's you know, right. you know, know, you know they don't want to hear it because i yeah. think they they pick us up as whiners mm -hmm. as you know women that just complain <laughs> or nag all the time and i think which we'll have a topic on about nagging and all that stuff but i think if if you listen and heard me the first time we can move on to the next mm -hmm. Um, wow. issue because after a while but, it sounds like blah 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 but exactly that, you know it is mean? blah 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 and a lot of times <laughs> not for nothing we are blah blah yeah, blah 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 we blah. we have more things similar in, in common than we do dissimilar I agree. Um, a, a lot of things y'all are saying right here is the same thing when I'm when I'm with the fellas and I talk to them we say we may use different words but um, the, it's point, the, same the thing. point is the same <laughs> principle you know we feel like 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 um, we t we talk about porn a pouring water into a colander. When you're talking to a woman, a lot of times you're pouring water into a colander. You're, you're putting in this effort, but it goes right on through. Mm -hmm. So it's like, did you catch what I said last time? Mm -hmm. And again, going back to what you said, the tone is like <laughs> so very key. Mm -hmm. You talk to a man in a condescending way. Mm -hmm. um, oh, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. Yeah. It's you, a wrap. You, can, you, yeah. can, you might as well go ahead and forget it. If you don't check you right then and there, mm -hmm. um, it'll be coming down the pipe. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Later. I think it has to do with um, the I think it has to do with the woman's um, what you call it her her I don't want to say her behavior or maybe her personality or whatever which is what I want to get into because if if you love somebody I'm trying to figure this thing out this love thing because you know let's define the in love in the love when we come back I mean, we got the love part. <laughs> now we need to know about the in love so that we can kind of put some more emphasis on it. And then I think it'll all kind of fall into place for us and we'll leave with a better understanding of both people wow. in the relationship. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. We're going to be right back.
Welcome back to the Single Ladies Cafe. And as you can see, we kind of switched our seats a little bit. So we have Miss Kiki to my, I guess it would be my right. Uh -huh. yeah. And then we have, <laughs> <laughs> we have Sila, C Sali. Sali. Sali on my left this time. So um, we're going to get back into our discussion about um, being in love or just loving somebody. So we got the definition and you know input on love. So now we want to talk about being in love. Um, so what we're saying is there is a difference. Yes. Okay, so with that being said, I was doing some research and I came across this one um, article that was very, very interesting, how they kind of describe or compared the two so that you can see the difference. And um, I'm gonna have Miss Kiki read it for us and then we'll get into our discussion right after. Mm. Okay. One, I fell in love with Snickers bars once. I bought and ate one every day for a month straight. Then eventually my feelings faded. The chocolate, caramel, nougat, and nuts were growing boring and almost made me feel sick. One day I decided I didn't want them anymore. I was over my Snickers phase. Butterfingers I love. <laughs> always have always will that'll never change no matter how many i eat obviously candy isn't the same as actual people but ed but edibles are something i'm passionate about so i use them as an example number two being in love with a person means that you can fall out of love with them we can grow impatient and sick of their ways resulting in us wanting something new then there are those who we love, the people who will push our buttons, aggravate us, and we'll even have serious conflicts with. But at the end of the day, we love them. Consider an argument with your siblings, parents, or somebody you genuinely, unconditionally love. No heated exchange or conflicts is going to alter your deepest feelings. Maybe in a moment, you're dissatisfied with them, but the love remains. With love, we can be in and out, and we can be in and fall out but once we really do we always will so do you guys agree yes. or is there somebody do you have a different opinion so that we can kind of say yay or no about the in love because i have my opinion mm -hmm. which i agree because this is where i called mm -hmm. um hassani our love expert because it to me it sounded as though there was some confusion about when someone is in love or when someone is just being loved mm -hmm. you know and I think people like the in love part a lot better than the love so we want to make clear that there is a difference between um, the two and I have some um, signs of when you are in love. This is not the love. We done moved on let's, past let's the love. Let's let's <laughs> well, a lot of them do kind of um, match the love, but um, I think it's just a little deeper and then I'll kind of total, you know, kind of give it a, my take on it. But emotions, you know, when you're like, when you're, when you're in love, you have these extra emotions. You feel a lot happier, you know, you know, people are asking you, who put that smile on your face? And you know, all that great stuff, you know, all those feelings. So the first one is emotions, okay? The second one is physical. It has to do with that tingling that you get, you know, ooh, shoot, I got butterflies. <laughs> I'm in love. <laughs> Y'all know that place. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Y'all know that place. We do. We, I do. I feel it several times a day. No. Um, oh, wow. No. <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, we have that tingling sensation when we first meet somebody, you know. Hmm. Then we have desires. That's the one that, you know, you, you, you want to be together all the time. And, you know, you can't you know, you want to talk to him or her, or you want to text them. You just want to, when we going to meet up next time? So that's pretty much like the desires. And then the last one, like you guys already said, was the action. So, you know, sometimes we like drifting off. You know, when you, you in that boy meeting in your mind, kind of like drifts off to him or her, <laughs> and you know. I do that. 
I was just doing that when you was just talking. You see, <laughs> you see, she done went on over to the other side. She done went on over to her booth. Come on, come on back, come on back for a few minutes. But um, these are the signs, some of the signs that we have that are very familiar when we first meet somebody and we're in love. Now, where I agree with Hassani at is, um, in love is infatuation. So when I hear people saying, well, he's in love with me or I'm in love with him, and I know that you've been together for two or three years, I'm starting to question the in love part because my opinion is that the whole in love, love things, there were different stages of it, and the infatuation part is the part that a lot of us get stuck at. A lot of us get stuck there. Divorces are created, as Hassani so nicely put, which is true. I mean, a lot of people want that, um, it's like a high that they want all the time. They want to feel good. They want to, you know, they, they don't want to get to the tough part, you know, or what we call is start settling in the relationship. You start seeing them for who they really are. Right. And then you, that whole thing, is, that's the make it or break it to me part. So um, I wanted to make sure that the audience knew that, you know, it's very important to know where you are in what stage you are in mm -hmm. your relationship. And some of us, I think, you know, we just going way too fast way 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 too high we just really need to slow down because you know it's just you know you have to one i think take some time out and i know i say this all the time but take some time out to know you and what happened last time before you bring you know your baggage into the relationship I and it. i think in this next oh i can't tell y'all yet oh but anyway um, you know, we're gonna be oh, talking. Hanging like that. <laughs> I, I, you can't be doing that from Hold the last on, minute. Yeah, yeah, it's one. one minute. Okay, <laughs> let me go. Let me go. I have to. <clears throat> I'll introduce it then. All right. Come on, lady. I had to. Yeah, she, she we actually out came out, oh. out with our first issue of our magazine. Yay! We did and it. we <laughs> absolutely love it. And it's free. You guys can, you know, go online, read it, view it, download it. We're thinking about putting some to print. So um, we wanted to get out in the community. Um, but one of the articles in here that will be in here next month will talk about, you know, um, slowing down a little bit and taking some time out to know who you are and knowing where you fit in your relationships. So it's very important to me to take that time out in between because if you don't know you, how are you gonna know me, okay? And I, I think also it's not about the high all the time or the I'm in love type of thing. I think some women love to hear themselves say I'm in love. Oh, yeah. Well, when you gonna get to the love part? I'm, a, I'm mature enough to know, no, I'm, I'm old enough to know. You know, there's a difference between in love and love, okay. and there's, it's not cute all the time when I only hear you saying that you're in love. Right. When you go, when, when is one of them relationships going to either get out or do the right thing? That's how I feel. You, you're not going to stay infatuated or on a cloud nine. That's not realistic in a relationship. So I just want to throw that out so that, you know, people would think about where they are because this topic came up because we were talking about, well, I'm in, I, 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 I would love them, but I'm not in love with him. Mm -hmm. Well, how can you love somebody but not be in love with them? I don't understand that because I think you had to start somewhere, you know, so, or we're just confused about where we are in the relationship. Mm -hmm. So. At some point, my thing is, know the definitions, I just gave y'all some. Yep. Miss Kiki gave you some about love. So when you tell me, when I saw you expression, the emotions of in love, don't tell me you've never been in love with that person. And I think you <laughs> have to, I, I, mean, I, I mean, I could be wrong. No, ma'am. But do I you have to be in love first to get to the love part? I would define it as, as this. Okay. And, and you made some very poignant uh, points. Uh, one, knowing yourself. Um, I, I have a, a, a hero, a heroine of mine, uh, Dr. Francis Cress Wilson, who wrote the ISIS nice. papers and, 
and several other books, who is um, one of our, our leading scholars, talks about a paradigm where most people get to know themselves by age 28. Okay. And y'all that haven't quite reached that um, at some point, you know, um, you should look forward to that, to that kind of point in your life. Um, knowing yourself, knowing your goals in life and how another person fits into those goals and what you're willing to offer that person should help in knowing whether this is someone that is, that, that your love can foster in. You know, in, in being in love as opposed to being in being loving someone as opposed to being in love, I think is those things that you feel like may be best for you, you are compelled to do other than that. Mm -hmm. When someone you feel like may not be the best for you, but you're so in love, you're so in that infatuation phase, like you said, you'll do stuff that you know you ain't supposed mm -hmm. to be doing. Uh, to to either gain or retain that person's favor. Exactly. Um, so that to me is one of the most uh, uh, demonstrative uh, uh, aspects of being in love as opposed to loving someone. Mm -hmm. And I agree. That was so nicely put. Um, I think a lot of women, and you guys can jump in at any time, not all women, but a lot of women, I think we don't know or we don't understand, you know, that whole we do do a lot of stuff to keep a man. We do a lot of stuff to keep a man. Let and a we know that we wouldn't, we yeah. let a lot That's of things so slide yeah. as well. Um, so we have to, you know, the whole purpose uh, or, or, you know, what, why the Single Ladies Cafe was yes, built was so that we can kind of define not just the bad behavior of men, but the bad behavior that women do. So that we understand as a woman, who we are and who we're dating. If you go to the website, we say it all over our, our literature. We say you have to know who you are and who you're dating. Now, if y'all just want booty calls, we ain't talking, this ain't the conversation for y'all. Okay. We're talking about good, booty calls is a whole yes, nother yes, arena. You know, we talk about that at another time. But for people that want to be in love and have healthy, strong, relationships you need to know the difference between in love and when I love somebody because of who they are I love him regardless of his flaws he loves you regardless of your flaws so I I tend to say you know it works on both both ways you know sometimes we do have to give a little more than what we might receive but it, you know again if he's not giving you anything and you know that you should be treated better, get out. Mm -hmm. At least talk to him first and say, you know, th you know, this ain't working. You know, I expected this and I expected that, which should have been a conversation before you hooked up anyway. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, it gets down to, you know, the, you know, here we are. You know, there might be some children involved, not as easy to walk out or to let go. Um, but I think, you know, it's, it's, it is what it is. And we find ourselves in these, you know, positions that we got to get ourselves out. And the lesson in all of it is to learn something. What did I do wrong? Or what did, what did he do wrong? And I think focus on you more than him. <laughs> Focus on you more than him because he gonna go on with Susie or whatever and until he's ready to check himself. Hold on now. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry. Hold on Okay, now. we gotta let him in just for a quick 30 seconds. No, 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 that's, that, that's fine. But again, um, again, you know, everything you said was, 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 was on point. Um, and um, I, I, just, I just want to reiterate that all of the things that you're saying, we say the exact same thing. So, so it definitely, <laughs> it definitely uh, adds to the, um, if there's a problem uh, between men and women in our relationships and our, in our, in our gender relations that, you know, culpability is, is, mm -hmm. is hand in hand. Mm -hmm. And I think we need more discussions. Mm -hmm. yes. I, think we, I think more men need to sit at this table. Yes, we all have strong personalities with three different women. We have three different views, but, um, we need a man from time to time to come in and say, hold up, wait a minute, y'all. Wow. <laughs> you know, we don't, we welcome that. So um, at any time you're free, you feel free to come and stop by and chat with you us. Let me know. Okay, I'll we will it. do that. So we only have like a few minutes left. Um, when we come back, we're going to get into our social media. We're going to find out what the people were saying on Facebook, okay, and Twitter. So um, 
we want to hear back from them and see what they if they agree with us or not. I don't know. <laughs> we'll be right back. Thank you guys for tuning in. Welcome back to the Single Ladies Cafe. Joining us now at a very crowded table is JV. JV is going to give us some feedback from Facebook on our topic today. What do you have? Like, what are they saying? Like, hurry up, hurry up. I just want to know what they're saying. <laughs> like, what are they saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do they say? What are they yes, saying? Yes, yes. Well, there wasn't, wasn't too many responses at all. Okay. But um, all, most of them, basically all of them were saying, yes, yes, you can be in love, and, but not in love okay. with them. So there is a difference. There is a okay. difference, yes. Oh. Then um, Marissa was like, I love my ex, but he is an ex for many of many reasons. I'm not in love with him anymore. Can't be his ride or die. Who is riding with me? When I want, <laughs> <laughs> when I want a life of kids and home and more when I was in love with him, I didn't leave but pack his bags and let, um, then he went. See, this is another case to me where the love, the word in love is being, um, I think, misused because or maybe the love part. Maybe she's right because right. you won't. You won't, if you love somebody, I don't think you would just pack up and leave. Um, but I heard her say she loves him, but she's not in love with him. But then what happened after that? That um, she packed up his bags, and then he left. Sent them all packing. Right. Mm -hmm. Sent them all packing. So I how? think that I was kind of like where she was, like my ex, like. I love him, but I'm not in love with him. Mm -hmm. um, I think now, just from listening, I think maybe you know I had it the had wrong it way. Had it, yeah. You know I, I, mean? I understand what you're saying because but I was because saying I that. know, like I was like we were talking earlier, like my son's father, like I love him or I have a love for him, but we can't be together. Gotcha. And you know, but I don't want to see any. Thing oh, bad happened exactly. with him, so I, like I think I'm kind of like like I thought that okay I'm in love. This is the love of my life. This is the guy that I want to be with. And then when those things started changing, then I felt out of love, but I love him. Mm -hmm. Right. But and I don't want to be with him. Right. Love him. But you still right. have a love for him. Well, th because there's a different type of love. I think there's a love that you have for one God, two your family members right. and friends and he may fall under that friend mm -hmm. and that's another area where I think we go wrong mm -hmm. we turn friendship into relationship mm -hmm. and it shouldn't be so you know I think right there is where we kind of get a little bit confused at but you can love somebody um, and care for them as a friend but when you're talking a relationship because there's some women that want him back oh, no. you know no. they unpacked people. up his stuff because mm -hmm. he did whatever whatever mm -hmm. no. and then they want him back yeah. but you <laughs> say no but is that real love for that person because if you love somebody you take them with their flaws and okay. all right i can love someone just like fox said mm -hmm. but that i can't be with them you know what I mean? Okay. Yes, I still love them. I still have feelings for them. But there's no way we can be in a relationship because there's things that's been done that I can't overlook. You then know how I mean? can you love him? Truly I, love because I, love yeah, is I unconditional. They, they, so they, how they, can they, they you truly can, they can, love that because person? Because they did something more or less to can me. Can we say like how they care did, for like that person versus love that finger. person? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Like, you just, like, that's, that's your thing right there, but you ventured off a little bit, so when that person ventures off, they love right. you, and they venture off, and they find the kind of... Like, they say, if you love someone, you set them free. Okay. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, because I said... That's I, not I, what but when the but, marriage but, vows but if I you're married. I set free that's because not, I would have probably killed him. Well, okay? I get so, it. I get it. So, yeah, so, so, yeah, I still <laughs> love him, but the what he's done to me in our relationship is what made me leave. But now, all his flaws that he came let in me with, I dealt with. That's on a... That, to me, conversation mm -hmm. is on a, I'm in a relationship with you, not married. But if you were married, it's not so easy. Or what are you going to do, disregard your commitment? Because your commitment said, your vows mm -hmm. said, for better or for worse. So we're going to talk, but maybe they need to change the vows now. Right. I don't know. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a new age you know, type of women coming up. Right. So we're mm -hmm. just not going to tolerate anything. Mm -hmm. I'm with you with, mm -hmm. you know, if you start to abuse me emotionally mm -hmm. or take advantage, I'm out. I'm, mm -hmm. Y'all know me. I'm out, yeah. you know. But um, at the same time, I'm not married. 
But I think when I'm married, and I've made, and I think that's a struggle a lot of women have, mm -hmm. because when they make that vow, that vow is important to them. It so is. when a man cheats on her, and vice versa, mm -hmm. but if a man cheats on her, we tend to, we're her, but for some reason there's something in the inside that still wants him, that still wants the relationship. Because we can go into this whole thing about we're in love with the relationship and not the man. Right, because I was going to mm -hmm. say, I think it's just that somebody, you we, just don't want that other person to, to have, have them. Yeah, but okay. Like, we can go into that. Like like, like when I was married, I, I loved him, in love with him, the whole nine. Okay, but he did cheat. I stayed because I, vow, I vowed my marriage. I made a commitment to him, I made a commitment to myself, and I made a commitment to God. That's what made me stay. But when he slipped up again and did it again, yeah, no, you're supposed no. to yeah, stay? No, that's abuse. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, no, I left. You know what I mean? Because of that situation. But I, I think my point is, you know, and I have to look at where the vows came from, who created them or why. Mm -hmm. um, but I just think that when we make a vow, I don't care what he did. <laughs> really, if, if you got to honor your vow, I mean, you know, my thing is understand that vow. What does for better or worse mean to you? Because a lot of times, what are we trying to say? We think that our man ain't gonna ever cheat, or that's how we go in. We go in thinking he ain't gonna never cheat on me, you know. But the bottom line is, when you have a vow, a vow is a vow, period. And if you make that vow to me, and all my flaws, flaws well, if I go out and cheat, I would expect the same thing. Now, I'm not saying that mm -hmm. it's an easy thing, but I think it's something that needs to be worked through, or we wouldn't be in all of these divorce no, courts you're, you're and right. all that. And I'm right. not saying that's a good place yeah. to be, yeah. but it's something, is the marriage worth saving? Okay. Now I'm talking to married yeah, but, people yeah, because but, 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 but relationship yeah, but then I look at it like I have to love myself because if he if he did it he did it once I accepted it and I dealt with it you know what I mean and uh, as you know there was a baby that came out of it he w I, I accepted it I dealt with it took care of the kid everything he went out and did it again another baby so no I'm not gonna stay because now I have to love myself and I'm not gonna let my children sit there and think that that's okay for that to happen because I want them to love themselves first. Now you gotta keep well, reading I, somebody else's baby too. No. Oh no. Yeah. Oh, so no. That, that can't help Well, it. new age women we're mm -hmm. we, you know these are our new women that are not but I think also with that lesson we need to mm -hmm. teach our women mm -hmm. our daughters mm -hmm. what to expect in marriage so that they're not because you know when we get 15 Mom gonna have three kids, a white fence, a house, two puppies, two, two, right. two, and my man's gonna be the bomb. He's gonna be making this much money. He gonna look good, smell good, do the right. He ain't gonna ever. My stuff is hot and tight, so he ain't gonna. And I don't mean the way y'all thinking, but I'm just saying I got myself together. He ain't gonna be leaking. I smell good too, and blah blah. So I think we give these girls a a a, a, a fantasy type of what relationship should be. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, when you got a dad like I had who says he, no man was good enough for me, no man. So I think the reality is no, I've got flaws like he has mm -hmm. flaws. So we need to train our daughters. If you're gonna leave the husband, then we need to make sure that our kids, our boys understand mm -hmm. what happened and our girls understand oh, yes. what happened. And I think we're leaving, but we're not, taking the message and spreading the message about what happened. That, that's just me. Mm -hmm. That's how I would do things because, you know, to be fair, a vow is a vow. It's no different from AT&T. They don't care if your husband left. They don't <laughs> care if your father died. They don't care what. The vow was, the contract is you're going to pay them on a monthly basis. And trust me, it's not going to be as easy to get out of that contract as it is a marriage. Y'all need to pay attention. Yeah. What is helpful, what is helpful, to, to kind of build that foundation, Ms. Essie, is, is that, and, and I heard you describe uh, what is bred into the young ladies at such an early age that they end up um, actively pursuing mm -hmm. in their life. And if you look at everything that you said, it all turns back into herself. Yes. Selfish. Selfish. Yes. And if, and if, and I'm not saying that women are uh, uh, innately selfish. Mm -hmm. I think those, some of those things are taught they socially. Are, yeah. And that when it's time to when to enter into a situation where uh, selfish I now becomes we, mm -hmm. um, there's there's a difficulty in the transition. I so agree. it's all about me first. Mm -hmm. And if we were to teach our children 
that, and this is a quote from another hero of mine, Muhammad Ali, when he says, service to others is the rent we pay for your room on earth. Mm -hmm. So we got to teach ourselves not just to love themselves, right. and then they'll know how to be treated, yes. but then start to understand love of service to others and then when they meet someone else with that kind of mind frame they start Powerful. to exactly they start to kind of um the 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 melding and the merging of those two people um become that much more effective i think mm -hmm. boys in particular you talked about the girls there's always this um attention to girls and and um their development and rightfully so as you all are the the threshold to the future so there must be much more uh, attention on your development and your protection yes but men are only going to treat you as well as they treat themselves and as well as they're being taught to value themselves so attention to the male as uh, esteem mm -hmm. has to be uh, uh in the forefront of our minds as well it's not just I was gonna let me ask you this because I always had a thought and coming from a male perspective um, I don't have any sons so you know I, I you know I have some brothers I have my dad but um, my question is I know a lot of men uh, maybe not a lot but there are men that you know they were just the bomb they were Mac daddy and they were all at the pimp you know we're in the pimp age right now you know doing all this but are we teaching our sons that, or are we teaching our son, are we teaching our sons to treat women with dignity and respect? Are we losing that whole, you know, I gotta be pimp? Because I'm just trying to say, like you said, we were talking about training and teaching our children, and their behavior is a taught behavior. Right. So is that can we fairly look at a dad and say, um, well, you know, your son is out there pimping and macking, you know? Um, is that the apple far from I, the tree? No man, no man, it's not. It's not. It's not far from the tree at all. The, the, the basic unit of civilization. Mm -hmm. You look at s s the word civilization, civil being the root word. Um, what is the level of civility um, in our communities now? What is the stability level? What is the the integrity level mm -hmm. of the family? And I'm talking specifically about. Uh, communities of color, the black community, the Latino community, the, the, since the family is in disarray, mm -hmm. the level of civilization has followed suit. Why is the family in such disarray? The father is usually absent, mm -hmm. and for an array of reasons that we don't have time to go into today, but it isn't always because of his own uh, contrition. Right. It's, it, it's, and there's a lot of different reasons mm -hmm. why he's not there, but he is not there. 50% uh, of all marriages fail be in in 18 months or less mm. usually the re main reason for that is financial well mm. why is it because a, a situation a condition has been created that is designed for two parents mm -hmm. two incomes that now one is is is, trying to is, maintain. is very, mm -hmm. thank you very much is trying to maintain mm -hmm. so the the stability of the of the family is at the root of that um, men and our, our uh, there's also something called the post-traumatic slavery disorder within mm -hmm. the black community mm -hmm. that we were taught that this was to be valued. The, the institution wasn't to be valued because we weren't allowed to really form those things at the nucleus mm -hmm. on a molecular level. So when we then become these players and, and pimps, for lack of a better term, when we merchandise the women, it's it's coming from that is the genesis of that you 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 learned you've been taught that this is merchandise this is not to commit to mm -hmm. this is just to to make more babies like you to be used as fodder for wow. labor so that's the basis do we do we stay with that um, knowing better no you know better you do better exactly. so so enlightenment has now come to us through several sources so we should know better but now you have the promulgation of of what now since the father's not there the mother's working to sustain the home who is teaching the child mm -hmm. I have to put a lot of that on 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 media mm -hmm. mediums yeah these kids are being raised by television yeah what's on television what are they attracted to a lot of music videos yes a lot of salacious salacious uh, filth on television so 
Um, they're being taught, they're being laid this value system that one, you're not really worth nothing. Mm. Your, 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 your place on earth is to gain more creature comforts through whatever, wh whatever means you can, and that this woman is not to be valued, she is not an equal, she is not a partner, she is an accessory. Wow, deep. Now that was I deep. I like having you here. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that right there was deep. I mean, this is the place that we need to go more often because if we don't go here, we don't take it here, then we don't learn. We right. can't mm -hmm. get, you know, it's nice to be able to doll everything up every now and then, but this is real. This is raw today. <laughs> this is how it is. And the only thing I want to leave before we um, leave this segment is that, you know, a lot of times, going back to marriage, a lot of times we need to not only know us, but we need to know that man that we're getting involved with. Because if we ask questions and we start going to the ex-wife, what happened? Start going to his mama first or something. I get y'all. Is that what happened? I get, I, I'm just <laughs> saying. Is that <laughs> Very real. I think we should. I think. I think another woman should respect wow. another woman that we need, not so that we find out what his business is, or his, but to find out what why happened in the work. relationship, why it didn't work, mm -hmm. and what. And then you can make a realistic choice and say, that's not going to be work for me, mm -hmm. or that will work for me. This sister may have had a problem with that. I may not, but you got to be realistic about it. A lot of us just want the man because we want that man, and we don't know nothing about him, and we need to start doing our research. Yeah, I know we know how to investigate. Mm -hmm. Let a woman member show up on that call. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> we will be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to the Single Ladies Cafe. And in this segment, we're going to be talking with Exposure with the Fox. She's going to give us our today's celebrity news and gossip. We have a visitor that we're going to be talking about a local event that is going to be happening that we're involved in. So we're going to let um, Fox give us the details all right so of course because we said that we did have a guest we want to let Sally have his time to discuss his event that he has coming up um I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of um, celebrity news and gossip so as you know Beyonce uh, took over uh, the Super Bowl I Who's guess. That? Yeah. <laughs> so um, she performed at the halftime um, this year and she Beyonce did her thing but I have to say that it's nothing different from what she already does. Like it was just She's just good was, at what she does. She's just good at what she does. Like it was there wasn't anything really to me that was really a wow factor. Mm. I mean, she looked good, obviously. We all know that she had a baby recently. The mm. baby just turned one. Mm. Um, so she looks incredible. Mm -hmm. Um, her performance she always is just on her she A game. Kills it. So, mm -hmm. you know, but one of the highlights was that Destiny's Child joined her on the stage, oh. Kelly and Michelle. Oh, nice. And they did a few, <laughs> you know, little songs with them. Okay. And a lot of people did it. They did it. They did it. But, um, <laughs> You know, they helped her out with single ladies, you know, our jam. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, yeah. Uh -huh. So they helped her out. And, of course, when each one of them had their chance to do a little solo part, the mics was real low. But one of the things... That's when gossip right there. Yeah, that, you <laughs> What's know, going that, on with that? Beyonce was trying to get all the, all the shine. She mm -hmm. was like, I'm going to let these heifers get on the stage with me, but they can't have the whole thing. So, you right. know, <laughs> but, um, she made a lot of money in Destiny Child. She, she made a lot of money yeah. in Destiny Child, and Come now the what? you know Queen mm -hmm. B, King B, whatever yeah. they call her. And um, one of the things that happened during or after the performance is Keisha Cole decided to take to her Twitter and kind of you know badmouth Michelle Williams. Why? I don't understand. I guess there was a little bit of so bad tripping. blood between the two, and <laughs> I mean it just started yes. to come out during this performance. Come and on. Um, yeah, of course I, I don't know what's going on with Keisha Cole because she's been on Twitter a lot running her mouth, but then she's not happy. You right? <laughs> Ain't she got a husband and a baby? Yeah. And, a baby. Yeah. and that then when, be plenty. when Twitter be goes goes down on that she don't like it she doesn't like the backlash that she's getting but one of the things that she had said the first tweet was you know she says I think I was frightened to blink a sec and then Michelle sung and woke my 
behind up from my days. She's always effing up the groove. Oh, God. What? Michelle yeah. said that? This is what Keisha, Keisha Cole said about Michelle. Oh, I'm going to say. So mm -hmm. this, it was just this whole big, like, <laughs> to-do on Twitter for, like, a whole day. And I don't know if she has, but I really feel like she needs to deactivate her page because Ooh, she's really? just been tripping lately. Like, she's just... You know... Awesome. Oh, Spartan, maybe? No, how old is her child? No, her child's old enough. No. Her child's old enough. Yeah. She's been, been finished she with no, her I saw just, I tried, just hood. tried to get you Just hood. Just hood. Exactly. That's what's yeah. wrong with her. Because if somebody did create a fake page and say, Michelle is Destiny's child and you're Frankie's child. You do it. <laughs> 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 exactly. Keisha's just hood. Exactly. So, so yeah. sorry, Keisha. You know, that album or CD you got is bomb right now. It is For the first time, I will listen it to is. her. The whole CD album. Yeah, it's do. very good. But you still hood. So she ended off the night with a tweet saying, but hey, I love y'all too, and your girl is whack, wow. and always will be. Hashtag boss. What? Okay. Yeah. So but we'll see wow. where that goes. I mean, my whole thing is, um, Keisha, how many Super Bowls did you exactly. sing at halftime at? Mm. But um, maybe she got something in the work. Maybe you know, that's something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. She can start singing notes sing live and all that song. stuff too. Then she, exactly. cause she don't be all that. No, great I mean here. I know, I mm -hmm. know. She she be singing from her heart though. But them notes don't come out. Don't come out that way. Well, something's okay. not right. Even in the pop. studio, she ain't doing that great. <laughs> Leave her alone. She is. I, I mean, I, I I have no problem with Keisha Cole, but that's just that's horrible. Yeah. Right well, one of the other big things is that after Beyonce's performance, the lights in the stadium yes. had gone out for a good while. So yeah. you know, everybody's saying, "Oh, Beyonce's performance was so hot. She yeah. killed the lights in the stadium." Oh, and yeah. 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 For thirty-four yeah. minutes, it went out. Like, are that's, you serious? Yeah, yeah. For thirty-four minutes. But I mean, <laughs> she did have a lot of stuff going on. I'm like, she did. Her visuals yeah. did juice up that stadium like, light, though. Like they said, it, it cost millions millions of dollars to actually do her lights yeah. for. Did she pay that bill or the city gonna pay that? Probably Pepsi. Exactly. I hope so. I'm Pepsi, sure. I need a sponsorship. <laughs> $30 million? We I'm only asking enough. for one. Exactly. We drink you enough. <laughs> <laughs> we do. So, and then lastly, Beyonce did announce a tour. She's got the Mrs. Carter tour hitting. Uh, she's actually going to be uh, starting in Europe on April 15th. Okay. And then she's going to make her way back to the U.S., starting in, US, um, in L.A. at the Staples Center on June 28th. Okay. And then she's going to be here in our area. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Um, August. 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 No, 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 no. This July 23rd, she'll be in Boston. Okay. And then she'll be in Connecticut in August. Okay. At Mohegan okay. Sun. Okay. So, I do want to give Sally his moment because he is here to introduce Yay. Facing Love <laughs> to the Single Ladies Cafe yes. and to the rest of our audience. So, Facing Love. Yes. Give us a quick breakdown. Facing Love is, um, is a symposium, a talk show style. A symposium a lot like what we do here a mm -hmm. um, few more people um, we have uh, very interactive as in terms of the uh, the audience it's not something that people can come and just listen to kind of a, a dry lecture be talked at or lectured to mm -hmm. um, you have the opportunity uh, throughout the event throughout the symposium nice. to interact with the panelists and it's usually around almost well it is centered around a, a central issue um, that we choose for each face of love. This is our sixth one. Ooh, nice. So yeah, this. Um, so it's once a year. Or? Well, well, we've done one year. We did two. Okay. And then we're we're thinking about doing two again this year. Okay. Because my goal is to get to ten face and loves, and then I'm trying to pass this thing. It's a lot of work, mm. um, and a lot of uh, consideration to go into it. Mm. It's it's much harder than doing just your normal social event mm -hmm. where you kind of just get a place, some liquor and some music, and you're mm -hmm. done. Now this is um, this is far more uh, intensive and extensive. How many people usually attend? We average about I would say 250 to 300 people wow. per symposium. Um, we've topped off at the last two at over 400 throughout the day. Nice. Um, uh, we're we're very very proud and and elated to have um, uh, uh, procured a, a, an item that will push this Face and Love 6, uh, the numbers through the stratosphere. Nice. Uh, so we'll be looking at, uh, I, would ex I would expect 400 to over 500 people for the day. Beautiful. Um, because of uh, Neo Soul Icons, Kindred the Family Soul, will be present Love and they them. will be performing a full set band oh. and all. Oh. So, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we're, we're, we're very blessed, very lucky to um to have gotten them um shout out to my man hassan smith for hooking that up 
Um, but first time ever in Boston. They've been in Foxborough mm -hmm. and in uh, Cambridge years ago, really mm -hmm. before they blew blue. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, they're going to be there, and we're going to be square. Nice. Yeah. Right. Nice. So for you guys do, that don't know who Kendrick, the family soul is, you, you need guys to really on. need to get hip yeah. to it. Yeah. They actually, I, we posted a song, SOS, by them um, yesterday on the fan New page. Yeah. It's, they're hot. They've yeah. been at the Essence Music, Music Festival many of times, yep. and they're featured on a lot of soundtracks to a lot of the, you know, African American movies that are out, they're hot. So they are. Um, you need to get out of this Little Wayne and Drake and all that and get yourself hip to Kindred, the family soul. But when is the event? The event is Saturday, March 9th, um, from 1 p.m. to about 7 p.m. Um, uh, 1 to 4 will be the symposium, from 5 to about 7 or so, um, Kindred will be performing. Nice. Um, there is a special. Uh, reception for those who have the class 100 tickets seven to eight kindred has allowed us to do a, a real quick q a with them live okay. so so it'll be kind of a mini symposium where you get to talk to kindred the family soul and ask them what you will you never know nice. when they'll be back awesome. this is the first time in boston you don't know when they're coming back That's awesome good. awesome awesome yes, this right. is gonna be food right Oh, there's going to be plenty of food. They got to be food. <laughs> yeah. like, like, I mean, we need food. We're doing it in Boston, but of course, uh, uh, we, we welcome all Rhode Island folk, all Providence folk. Uh, Connecticut will be in the house. Springfield, Worcester, Cambridge, everybody. All right. Okay. Awesome. Nice. Well, thank you for stopping by. We appreciate it. Thank, we thank you. Thank you for reaching out to us and extending the invite. Yes, ma'am. And we hope that you guys will really take advantage of this. Um, we, like we said earlier, we don't want to hear anybody say there's never anything to do in New England. There's always something to do. And if you don't know, come to the Single Ladies Cafe. We will let you guys know. So. As we, are we, are we, am We're I, done. Am right? I done? They We're always done. squeeze me out of We're my We're done. <laughs> We're done. Thank you for tuning in, everybody. We'll see you next time. Single ladies. Single ladies. Single ladies. Oh, yeah, simple and sexy.